Hi everybody, I've been really into doing my own nails recently, specifically junk nails, so I had to do a makeup look. I'm starting with the got to be brow gel. I've loved this in my pro kit for a while, but I have never used it to like stick down my brows. And I think this was like one of the first times I've used it. It's not as I would say like fun to work with as other brow cover products I've used before. Like it doesn't necessarily immediately give you that like punchy, gluey, stuck down feeling, but it does work. So I apply one layer, I blow dry it on cold air. I make sure to like hold the hair dryer down so it blows up. It is also really important to be patient here and to spend the time drying the brows. If you get ahead of yourself and you don't let it dry properly before you move on to the next step, you will end up in pretty hot water. Then I use a, like a really a really really fine brow brush I love this one from Bear and I basically put it flat and scoop the brows up flip it on its side and then press them down again it's really important to spend time doing this properly I flip back and forth between combing the brows and flattening them down to make sure that all the product is through every crevice of the brow this is me enjoying the process. It's going pretty well. It's so risky using like a new brow cover. Just for extra security, I go back with the end of a brush, make sure it's clean obviously, so that it sticks down and it stays really, really smooth. This is where the brows will start to get super sticky and tacky. Try not to let the dryness of the glue at this stage hold you back from just pushing through with the clean brush to make sure that it's flat and then blow dry it again. I do this until it's not shiny, that's when you know it's dry. And then I'm just using like a water wipe to take off as much excess around the brow that I can. You basically wanna go right up to the edge. I'm prepping my skin with skin food, obviously. This, this needs no introduction, this needs no comment. And I like to do this after my brows because I feel like it gives my brows a little bit more time to set and mentally prepare themselves for what is about to happen, which is set and powder. This was my like second time using this Morphe powder. I just got it. I think I used it like the day before and I absolutely love it. I'm using it with the Morphe puff and I find that they work so nicely together. This is the bake and set powder, so there's obviously like multiple ways that you can use it, but I've really been enjoying using it to block out my brows. I go in with one layer first of all, just check that's fine. When I'm doing this, I kind of make sure just to press it on. You're not moving it around at this stage, just press it onto the brow a good couple of times and do the other one i hope you can't hear my washing machine you probably can but i have to and i'm using the flatter thinner side of the puff just so that the powder doesn't go everywhere because i don't need it everywhere and it just really concentrates on the brow as you can see i am satisfied with the cover I'm going to use my About Face eye paints in Freaked and White Noise. I love About Face. I don't even need to talk about them. You know I love them. I really love them for brow covers. But I'm mixing these two shades. I really, really like this like super white base lavender that I get when I mix them, especially for a brow cover. And I always kind of find myself leaning towards this when I want like sort of a nude base that is more cool toned and less warm. I mix the two shades together on the back of my hand, apply it with a brush and then I blend that out with a sponge. This is the Kosa sponge I believe and I don't know how much of a difference different brands of sponges make but I really like this sponge. And then I go again on the second brow. I have to work really really quickly here so if I look stressed on my face it's because I am and I'm really deep in thought and I'm probably thinking that if this doesn't work I will cry and like it'll ruin my day and I don't want to do that but it's going pretty well so we're like safe for now. I'm going back into my Morphe powder and I'm going to do another layer of 
and look how nicely that covers it just like blends so beautifully i know you can kind of see my brow underneath a little bit but i don't really care because when everything else is on you're not gonna see it and i kind of like when you can tell the brow is blocked and then you've drawn a brow on top i think it looks quite cool then i just dust off the excess with a clean fluffy brush i'm very happy with this as you can see this is another one of my like favorite products ever it's the meron clown white face paint you can use it for anything obviously i am going to use it as my base today I find it nearly impossible when I block out my brows to not do a white base but I knew that I wanted like my face to reflect nails as if someone had gone and got their nails done and they asked for junk nails. I know there would be a white base in there somewhere so I really wanted to like emulate that but I'm going to mix it with a tiny bit of MAC Studio Fix Fluid Foundation just to tone it down a wee bit. It's still going to be super super white which is what I want, but um, I like to just sort of warm it up a tiny, tiny bit so it's not as clowny and it's a bit more like blurry and more of a wash of white as opposed to like Marie Antoinette. I also find that it helps the clown white to blend better because the clown white is very like pasty, very thick very heavy and when you warm it up it's fine to blend like it blends like a dream anyway but a little bit of foundation in there just kind of helps it give a wee bit more slip again it was really important for me to not like have just like a white sheet over my face so i'm blending it and blurring it out towards the edges as opposed to having like a harsh line around my jawline so whatever i've applied to the center of my face i just kind of blow out and let it be nice and soft and then I apply more white on the under eye so that it's and blend that out like a concealer so that it's mostly white in the center of my face and then it blows out to a kind of neutral skin like finish and I just blend that all out with this random gray sponge I don't know where it's from but I use it all the time and it's pretty good Again, patience is so key here and make sure you really spend your time blending. Look up when you're blending the under eye so that you remove any excess product. It's less likely to crease and it looks smoother and softer overall. I'm back to the Morphe powder and a powder puff and I'm setting everything down under my eyes, on my eyelids. And then I use a fluffy brush for the rest of my face because I don't want it to be as heavy on the perimeter, on the outskirts of my face. I got the powder in my eye, eye here and I was obviously like desperately trying to take it out. This was a scary moment because I thought, oh my god, my eye's going to water now and the whole thing's ruined. But it was actually fine. I'm cleaning my nose piercing here because I, some, I just recently got it re-pierced and I always forget to clean it. And it looks not good in photos, so I need to do this more. Cleaning up my lips, I love doing this, I don't know why. I think it looks so pretty when like the face is like really smooth and unnaturally white with a natural lip. I think it looks so cool. I know this highlighter hates to see me coming. It is one of my favorites ever. I love Kaleidos anyway, but this shade, Gifted, is just so good. It's like a bluey pink, my favorite colors. I love putting it on top of a brow block because it doesn't really give like a wash of color. Kind of just gives like a hint of something when you move around. And again, I was trying to emulate um, actual kind of nail art. So a wash of glitter is perfect. Like, you know, if you go and get your nails done and you want like dams and zunk and all that, they're gonna put a glitter base somewhere on one of the nails or on some of the nails or all of the nails. So I thought that was a perfect base for the junk. And this is also kind of something I cannot get away from doing. I love doing a black tight liner um, every single day. I love doing it with very creative looks. I think it just makes everything look so sharp and so striking. And it's also a really nice contrast with all the girly, with all the girliness going on and all the lightness of the skin i think a touch of black is just so like eye-catching 
I'm using the Makeup by Mario liner. I really like this liner and I didn't use the brush to flick it out a wee bit, but the brush on the end looks shit, but it's really, really good for winging the liner out and blurring it out. But I'm using an eyeshadow brush, but you don't have to do that. At this stage, the brush is clean. There's nothing on the brush and I'm just blending it, the liner, as it is. I am going to blend the bottom out with a tiny bit of black mascara because I want it to be diffused and I'm going back in with a clean brush, clean fluffy brush just to make sure that it is nice and soft only on the under eye, I don't want it up on the top, I want the top to be sharp and I want the bottom to kind of blend and blur in the skin. Again, really spend your time with the blend here, it's going to be so worth it. This is the world's smallest Q-tip. It is so tiny and skinny, and it is so perfect for everything. Sharpening your edges up, fixing tiny mistakes. When you need to be really precise, these are incredible. I got them on eBay, and I can never go back to normal Q-tips now for make mistakes or for sharpening things up. I really didn't want much or anything on the lashes at all, especially not fake lashes, so I'm just doing a tiny bit of mascara. Okay, we're getting into the gems now. I got these on Amazon, you can get them anywhere. I start by just laying down dots of glue and I just pressing down a few gems that I like. I didn't really film this because it was really repetitive and long and I'm literally just sticking gems down. I then moved over to like smaller nail art gems that I've had for a very long time and I picked out small, medium and large and kind of just dotted them in between all the bigger junk pieces just so that it adds like a little bit more dimension and it fills up the gaps a little bit and just makes them a little bit more realistic. I love using this green shadow as blush. It's so nice. It's kind of become like a neutral to me now. I feel like I've used it so many times, but I just love it with everything. It always looks so good. And I thought it would be nice to pull out the little bits of green in the eye as opposed to the pink. So it wasn't overly on the nose. I'm using MAC Rage Liner here, which looks with, when I have like no other makeup on, it looks so weird on me, like it looks green. Um, but with everything that's going on, it looks really neutral, like as if it was stone. I'm also using Freaked as a base because I want a full coverage nude. And Freaked obviously ties in to the rest of the look and keeps everything pretty neutral. I'm using this AF94 gloss in underneath it all. It's a bubble gum. It gives a hint of pink, which works perfectly for the theme, but it's not like overbearing. And there we have the junk eyes. I absolutely love filming this look. When I imagined it on my iPad, on my face chart app, I was so excited to do it. And I'm really, really happy with how it came out. And I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.